Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, we will be discussing request body annotation as well as the response body annotation. So guys, this is the seventh video in the Spring Boot annotation series. I hope you are following this series as of now. If you are a beginner in Spring Boot or you are preparing for the Spring Boot interviews, then this series is definitely for you. So do not miss any of the videos that we'll be uploading. So make sure that you are subscribing this channel because we will be covering every annotation from basic till advanced level. Okay, so you will get notification for every video either that will be posting for this series or any job updates that will be posting on our channel. So don't miss any of those updates. Make sure that you are present on this channel. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, do not forget to like this video. Okay, so guys, the request body annotation. So guys, when we send a post request, it means that we are sending some data to the server. Okay, and uh, at server, our APIs are there. That is our Java code is there. The data that we are sending in the post request is generally in the form of JSON and we are sending it through Postman. Okay. When it reaches our controller method in Java, when that post request reaches our controller method in Java, we want that this data should automatically be converted into Java class object so that we can use it in our code. So now we are sending the data. Okay. When we are sending the data in the form of JSON from Postman to server at server, our API is there. That is our Java code is there. So how our Java application will process that data. We all know that Java applications are based on objects. So we want that our this JSON data should automatically get converted into the Java object. Okay. So for that reason only we are using request body annotation. Okay. So request body annotation, why it is used? It is used to for mapping the JSON data into the Java object. Okay. I hope this thing is clear to you. This theoretical part of request body is clear to you. Next is response body. Now response body is opposite of request body. See, we have seen this response body in previous videos also. So what it does is when we are returning some Java object from the controller to our client, that is our postman. Okay. So, we, uh, so when making a REST API, we cannot directly return Java object from the controller because our client that is postman won't understand it. So we use response body annotation to convert a Java object to JSON. So again, response body is also same only just that when we are returning any object from controller, we, uh, our client that is Postman won't be able to understand that Java object because, because it is a Java object. Postman won't be able to understand it. But Postman understand it understands JSON, XML or this type of things. So response body is used to convert our Java object into the JSON format. Okay as well whereas request body in simple terms is used to convert our json data that we have sent through post request into our into the java object which can be used by controller okay so i hope this difference is clear it's simple request body is used to convert json to java whereas response body is used to convert java to json okay so json i'm taking an example you can convert it to xml also xml to java java to xml all these things can be done just for an example i'm taking this json so I hope now the definition is clear about request body and response body. Now quickly move towards the editor so that we can do a hands-on for these particular annotation. Okay, so the coding scenario here is for in the post request, we want to send the student's detail that is his role number as well as his name. Okay, so first of all, let's just design the student class first. Let's just make a package, new package in which we will be defining all the entities. Uh, okay. And inside this entity package, we will make a new class, Java class that is student only. Okay. So inside this student, we have inside this student, what we have, we have two fields private. Okay. So private is the, uh, sorry, private integer ID that is role number. And next one will be private string name. Okay. Let's just uh, generate some getter setters here. Okay, uh, let's uh, code generate, let's just generate uh, getters and setters for both of these. Okay, so this thing is done. Okay, and now we will what we'll do, we will make the student class as the component because we want it that Spring should manage it. Okay, so now in the post request, what will we be doing? We will be sending the student data. Okay, so let's just quickly open our postman. <clears throat> Uh, it's taking a bit time. Okay. So this is our postman and let's just design an API called uh, student API slash student slash details. 
so this is the uh, api so when we will hit it as a part of body what we will do we will send the we will uh, send the details of the student in the form of json we will be sending how we will sending it in as a part of body so this is will be a post request because we are sending details to the server so first will be id so id is one and name uh, name will be let like, just suppose code bashers okay so now we have to handle this post request with this uri at our controller also so let's just quickly go towards our controller it was our test controller so in this uh, sorry request controller in this what we'll do we will define a method that will be handling this particular um, request so what we'll do first of all in the post request we will uh, send the details of the student and through this method also or let's just suppose uh, through this method we will return a string only from the controller we are we will returning string only so name of the method will be student details okay in this now see since we are uh, sending the data from controller to our java application but we want that 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 data should automatically get mapped to a java object of class student so for that what we'll doing we will do using request body annotation request body annotation then the java object in which we want to map it so it is java object will be of type student and the name of that object will also be student only let's suppose okay so this will be uh, import class which one we have to import entities one okay now since uh, we have to set request mapping on also that which uri will be handling this particular uh, request so in this we will give value is equivalent to uh, what was the uh, uri pattern it was student slash details okay let me just copy here students slash details yes like this okay and what will be the method method will be post method will be post only uh, where it is a post method this is the post method okay now what we want see what this request body is doing that body that is coming from the request it is automatically get mapped to this student one okay in student let's just uh, do two string method also let's just give two string method also if it is given here uh, code generate uh, two string yes sorry it will be generate two string method okay so now in the test controller when we'll do uh, go here okay request controller let's just print print this student that is what is print getting printed in this student only system dot out dot print ln okay print ln what we are printing we are printing student only okay student object only and one thing we want to return from here that is this string only so we have to return return string hi i am in uh, request body mapper request body function okay so we are returning this string object from here but I, one thing i have told you that once we are returning this string object this is a java object controller or oh, our postman won't recognize it therefore what we will be doing we will be adding response body annotation over it so that this object that we are returning from the controller it is getting mapped to the json one so that our postman can uh can print it okay so let's just run our application and then we will be hitting this endpoint so students detail this particular endpoint and the post method is being mapped to this student details method okay oh sorry there is some uh oh, okay so the issue was that there were two student classes as i have discussed in previous lectures also so there also i have taken a student example and i made a old uh, new student class also so therefore there was an error that two student classes exist so now it is cleared i have like one deleted one student uh, class so now our student class have id and and name so let's just go to our postman and hit this particular endpoint so send so here you can see that hi i am in the request body function okay request body function we are in and here if you are seeing that we are printing the student details here so on the console entire student details have been printed that is id equal to one and name is equal to code bashers okay so now see we are printing the student detail now instead of string what we do what we do we simply return this student object only let's just simply return this student object only so control c this is the student object that we are returning and return type will be student 
only okay so now let's just rerun our application and see what does it happens so i will explain the entire concept now request body and response body it will be clear to you so again let's just hit it so send so see in the return also there is a json that is printed that is id equal to 1 and name is equal to code bashers so currently what is happening in the post request so once we are hitting this post request the body that we are sending so first of all using this request body that body in the postman is getting converted into a student class object okay this student class object and that student class object is now a java object now this student class object we are returning from this controller okay we are returning from this controller so now to get for getting printed inside the postman this student class java object will have to be converted into json so therefore this response body is coming into picture here and because of this only this response body only now we are able to print the entire json for the student class inside this postman so i hope now the concept of request body and response body are clear to you request body is converting json to java and response body is converting from java to json that's it so this was it for this video i hope you liked the video do hit that subscribe button for this channel and do follow this playlist because we will start covering advanced level annotations also thank you for watching this video